I hope you're enjoying my YouTube channel, Rick Swords Watercolor. Be sure to sign up to my mailing list to get the latest information about my videos, online courses, workshops, coupons, and giveaways. You can find the sign up link in the description of this video, or you can click on the link in the top right hand corner. Welcome to the narrated step by step tutorial for my painting, Pumpkins. The photograph on the right was the inspiration for this painting. It's fall and it's always enjoyable painting some of the fall subjects and I enjoy painting pumpkins from time to time. I've drawn my sketch on a quarter sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It's 11 inches by 15 inches and you can see that I've drawn the major shapes and I've given some indication on some of the detail on the, uh, the individual pumpkins. These are the colors that I used in the painting. Halloween orange, you could use a Windsor orange or something similar. Gamboge, cadmium yellow light, quinacridone coral, alizarin crimson, sap green, raw umber, royal blue, and cerulean blue. I know I wanted to begin my painting with a large light valued wash of oranges and yellows uh, to, to allow me to uh, get that watercolor feel and and get some gradation of some of those tones across the entire page. So I could just uh, have gone ahead and done that, um, but I've decided to mask first. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to put a frisket using clear packing tape over these stem shapes. The stems have a speckled pattern of, of a light green tone and um, the reflection of some of the light that are whiter tones that I didn't want them to have the, the yellow and orange wash on them. So rather than paint around them, I decided I would just mask them. That way I can apply my large wash with a lot of gradation and not have to worry about losing the white on those stem shapes. So what I've done is I have applied clear packing tape over the shapes that I want to mask and I'm going to use a small knife to uh, cut the uh, frisket out of this tape. So I, I lightly drag that knife over the area that I want to cut with just using light pressure. And then I'll just take the, uh, the edge of the knife and I'll lift off the tape from the area that I, I'm not protecting and it'll just leave the tape in the area that I want to protect. So you can see here that just using light pressure and then I'll uh, take the uh, tip of the knife blade and I'll pull up the, the masking uh, from the area that I don't want it. So I'm just going to pull that up and then it just leaves the, the shape that I'm protecting that stem. So I'll just repeat that on all these other uh, stem shapes. So now I've masked all the stem shapes that I wanted to protect and I'm going to come in with a, a big loose wash. So I have one inch wash brush and uh, I'm using some of the Halloween orange and I'm using mixtures with some gamboge and some put acrid and coral in it, a little alizarin crimson, just to give me some variation of some yellow, orange, and red tones. And I'm working wet on dry here to start. And once I've applied this initial wash, anything else I add to that will be working wet in wet. So you can see how I'm able to just to have this nice continuous wash and it just goes uh, around the, the areas that I've put the, the frisket. So by, by having this nice loose wash, I can get some uh, gradation going in some of these areas and get some, some nice soft transition of uh, color from, from the yellows to the orange uh, to some red tones. As I apply this, I will come in and do some uh, uh, wet on wet brush work and I'm also going to come in with the, the spray bottle and uh, use that to help uh, move some of the paint around and, and create some more gradation. 
and keep in mind I always work at about a 15 to 20 degree angle so my board is on a slight angle and uh, gravity will start to, to have make that paint move a little bit and help with some of that gradation so you can see I pretty well have the entire paper covered right now with the exception of those areas that I applied the the mask or the clear tape frisket. So now I'm going to take my spray bottle, this is a fine mist spray, and I'm just going to lighten up a few of those areas. So I'm spraying away the paint. The whole the whole page is saturated at this point. I'll take a, a tissue here and blot uh, some of the excess water uh, away or some of the excess paint mixture. When I'm working like this, I normally have a spray bottle in one hand and a tissue in the other. You always want to be aware of your moisture content. And now I'm going to completely dry my paper using a hair dryer. So the paper is completely dry and you can see it dried much lighter but you can still see the gradation and the shifts of the intensity of color a little bit. But now I'm going to start to come in. I'm just working with a, a number six um, or it's an eight general purpose round brush. It's a sable that I'm using but just a good general purpose brush that can and has enough uh, uh, to, the, to the brush to help spread some washes around. You don't want to be too fine a point um, and not hold water and we struggle to, to gradate some of these washes. But I will be using a bottle, a spray bottle also. So I'm bringing in some mixtures that are a little bit more uh, intense with color, a little more rich with color, I probably should say. And uh, so some of these mixtures are um, Halloween orange with some alizarin crimson or uh, Gambos with a lizard and crimson and uh, quinacrid and coral. So I'm moving around the composition, um, putting some of these gradated washes in areas that are more in shadow. So they're not the darkest values that I'll be applying, but they're they're mid middle value and they're they're rich with color. Some of these, you know brush strokes that I'm putting by but then I'll come by and I'll soften some of these with a fine mist spray or just bring my my brush loaded with some water to help uh, gradate some of the some of the brush strokes that I'm putting down I don't really want a lot of hard edge um, shapes on in some of these areas while while in others there are definitely going to be some harder edges but I'll, I'll develop those more as uh, I progress through my painting process. I'm going to take this same mixture and apply some of that around the, this pumpkin here that's more in the foreground. And I try to try to have my my brush strokes contour the surface there. So um, I'm, as I make my brush strokes I, I, I follow the contour of the pumpkin helps helps give it a little bit more dimension. Applying some more of this, these in particular in the middle of these pumpkin shapes. So I'm making those brush strokes that contour the pumpkin, then I'm softening those edges with a fine mist spray. Always be aware of where the where the moisture is at on your page. Once again I've thoroughly dried my paper and now I'm just applying some more washes. Uh, this time I'm using a, a mixture which has a little bit more gamboge in it. It's a, it's a yellower mixture and some of, the, some of it will be some Halloween orange but I don't have as much of a red tone in this wash right now and uh, still softening the edges with a fine mist spray. So this is just a continual process of building up some of these layers. I'm not really going too dark too fast, but I will um, be bringing in some darker values here.
here I'm just moving around I'm gonna put some more of this uh, lighter uh, less uh, less red wash it's more of a yellow orange and then softening that with a fine mist spray do the same here bring in some of that my paper is thoroughly dry and now I'm going to remove the uh, frisket that I've applied to the paper I just put my knife tip underneath and lift up and then pull it off now I've removed all the clear tape and it's revealed just the pure white of the paper now I'm going to take a, a toothbrush that's had a little soapy water applied to easy, for easy cleanup. Uh, but I'm going to dip it in uh, some liquid masking fluid. I'm just going to give a light splatter of the masking fluid to these shapes of the stems. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can get the uh, texture, the, the speckle, uh, little speckles of, of light color that appear in these dark stems. Another way to do this would be to, to paint these stems with some dark value washes and then uh, go back after it's dry and spritz some clear water on it and then just lift it gently with a tissue. That would give you uh, a textured pattern in there too that could represent uh, those speckles that appear in the stems. I've let the liquid masking fluid air dry and now I'm going to take a pickup eraser and I'm going to pick up some of that the splatter that got in the areas around the stem. I was pretty close to the paper, so it's it's somewhat controlled, but you can't keep it uh, exactly within the sh that shape that I was trying to to put that texture. So I'm just going around the the areas around it and just removing that dried masking fluid. Next, I'm going to start to work on these uh, the stems of the pumpkins. So I'll be using a, a dark green and a, and a some some lighter uh, green washes. But my mixture is uh, made up of sap green with some royal blue and some alizarin crimson. So that royal blue helps cool it down a little bit and darken it, and then the alizarin crimson comes in and makes it a little bit more neutral. I'll also mix in at times some cerulean blue to give a, just a little bit of a cooler tone to the green. I'll bring in some darker green washes here too and as I do you'll start to see that uh, speckled pattern that start to come through a little bit uh, from the splatter of the masking fluid. You, you won't quite have the contrast that eventually you'll see but um, you can see that it creates a texture as I put those brush strokes down. You can see I've done a second stem there and now I'm moving on to a third using the same approach on all of them. So I'm trying to make these brush strokes follow the the length of the stem there and just kind of contour the, the the linear part of that shape and then I'll leave some lighter areas for the ridges on these stems. And again I'm moving on to another one here and I'm going to follow the the shape of this stem. It's, it's a, kind of a, a curved linear shape. So this again is the sap green with some royal blue and alizarin crimson mixed in. And you can see it's a, it's a pretty dark value that you can get. It's still going to dry uh, a little bit lighter, but uh, it's a nice dark value. And here I'm moving to this smaller stem shape. I'm working with a, a smaller area and not as linear as some of the others. There's either the top of a stem there or the, this one just has a 
short stem that's been broken off on the pumpkin behind the one that's more in the foreground there. Now I'm doing this pair of stems here at the bottom. It's important here to try and uh, use use my brush strokes to to make it feel like these two stems are going in uh, different directions or they just kind of come together and get lost. Now I really want to start to define some of these edges, so I'm going to start. Uh, applying some uh, middle to darker value uh, washes and uh, as I do this you'll start to see some more light against dark and you'll start to see some harder edges um, even though I'll still be using some gradation so this mixture here uh, has some alizarin crimson added to an orange mixture with a little bit of raw umber and at times I'll add some royal blue into this so um, the, the alizarin crimson with the raw umber makes a, a dark warm tone and uh, the royal blue uh, cools it down a little bit and makes it dark. Uh, I mean, you can see how it's a fairly rich color. And now you see the, the sharper edge of that pumpkin there. I'm going to bring this darker value further down between these two pumpkins and it'll start to define uh, more of the edge of the, the pumpkin there on the left and also the one on the right with sharper edges. I'm going to take a mixture here that has a bit more of the royal blue added to it so it's a little darker and a little cooler and paint it between these two pumpkins and uh, it's just a dark uh, shadowed area here. As I fill this in, uh, you'll start to see the, these pumpkins uh, come more, t uh, more forward in this dark area, this dark shape that I'm painting will start to recede and go back, starts to build depth into the painting. I'm actually working in negative space here. So I'm by painting the area around these pumpkins, I'm making them come forward and, and giving them more definition because I'm, uh, using this wash I'm defining their edge uh, the edge of those shapes and I'm making a stronger statement I'm going to move to another area in the composition here more towards the lower right and I'm going to work to, to further define uh, these uh, pumpkin shapes using similar colors some of the raw umber with um, some alizarin crimson a little bit of royal blue and then I'll work in some of the orange orange washes that have combinations of Halloween orange with some alizarin or some uh, quinacridone coral and some gamboge. Uh, I'll work some of those in, even some of these dark washes. But uh, as I work in this area, there's there's some areas where the shadow actually has a hard line where one shape is casting the shadow on the other, and then other areas have uh, more of the gradation because the uh, the, the the shape of the pumpkin and, and where it is relative to the light source just creates a, a a soft shadow and then there's a lot of reflected light bouncing around from one pumpkin on another so a lot of things going on here so I use a combination of, of hard edges soft edges use gradation um, and let colors and values just diffuse in some areas while I keep it hard edged in others As I'm bringing this wash across, I'm working wet on dry, and I'm going to charge my brush with um, more of an orange mixture here and just continue the wash. So I've changed colors, but it's still one wash. I could have reloaded my brush with the same dark mixture, um, but instead I chose to um, reload it with a, a kind of a dark red orange tone, and you can see how. Um, that can give the feeling of some reflected light coming off that pumpkin at, right above it. And then I'm going to soften that up a little bit 
uh, with a spray and blot up some of the excess. And I'll come back in that area and do some more work. In this next area, there's a narrow band of a dark value between these pumpkins uh, that help to find their edge. And you, you can you know, sense that, that that area behind it is, is going back in space and is a very dark value. And I've switched to a quill brush here because I, I like the fine point, yet it still holds a lot of uh, paint in the brush. So you can see here as I make these uh, brush marks, I'll start to give a lot more definition to those shapes that are a little further in the background. So I've moved that value behind that stem shape and brought it to the other side and then it's going to continue on uh, on the other side of this other stem. And that whole area to the right is pretty much in shadow. So I'm bringing in a, a little bit darker wash, still a very warm wash. I've defined those edges and now I'm just going to take that wash to the uh, edge of my paper. Here's another area where I'm doing much of the same uh, type of brushwork and same washes. You can see I'm using the same uh, mixture as I move across. And if you look at these dark areas, you can see some areas where it goes from dark and there's a bit of a glow to it. So those are, those are areas where as I was applying my wash, instead of just continuing to load my brush up with uh, the darker value, I, I loaded it with, say, a darker or a middle value orange tone. Not clear water, but an orange tone. Here I'm applying a kind of a reddish, uh, deep reddish brown, but still has a little bit of an orangey feel to it. And I'm bringing that down into that darker mixture. So you kind of have the feeling of some reflected light bouncing around there in shadow. Now where these two pumpkins come together, there's going to be a, a bit of a shadow cast and it's uh, going to soften as it goes away from the right to the left. So got a hard edge on the right and then it's going to soften as I move away from that edge and it's going to follow the contour of that pumpkin. So right now I'm using my brush but I'm going to take that spray bottle and just diffuse that color a little bit up so it it starts to contour that the shape of the pumpkin away from uh, the one on the right. I'm going to carry that middle value tone up a little bit more into the pumpkin where you have some of the the grooves, the recessed areas of the pumpkin as it grows. And then I'm softening it with the uh, spray bottle and I clean it up a little bit with a Kleenex. Now I need to come in and start to uh, define a little bit more of some of the features of the pumpkin, a little bit more of the form. It's not just a smooth ball, it has ridges as it, as it goes around the pumpkin. So I have a middle value wash that has uh, some Halloween orange, has a little quinacridone coral in it and a touch of uh, alizarin crimson. Times I'll bring in some gamboge. So I'm painting these areas where there, uh, there's grooves in the, the pumpkin and uh, I'm going to soften those edges a little bit with a spray at this point. So I like to use this spray technique just to soften edges when I don't want hard edges um, completely. Sometimes I'll just leave a little bit of a hard edge and I'll soften part of it and then it'll pick back up to a hard edge and it'll go from a soft edge to a hard edge and back to a soft edge and a lot of times I'll, I'll get some of that too just by blotting with a tissue. 
I'm being somewhat loose as I paint this. This is the style that I like to paint. You could, you could spend hours on this painting and take almost a botanical approach if you wanted and build up a lot of very subtle layers um, to define this painting, but that's just another way to approach it. My style tends to be somewhat loose with, with larger brush strokes. Um, I don't often take a, a zero brush and, and noodle away at a painting for hours. That's just not how I like to paint. There's nothing wrong with that. You need to paint uh, in a manner that, that fits your style. And I always, I always encourage people just to take bits and pieces from uh, whatever painting processes they see just just take the, the parts that that fit you and your personality. Now I'm putting some uh, some of the features of this uh, smaller pumpkin here a little bit to the right and taking the, the same approach as I did on the, the one to the left. So I have this middle value wash. I'm putting that uh, in the area where the pumpkin is grooved and here I'm taking some clear water and just softening that edge a little bit and I'm still going to uh, spray this uh, to soften up some of those edges a bit more. Uh, I like it uh, for for two reasons. It, it, it softens these edges and it also lets some of that color run and diffuse over the air, uh, the surrounding area. And you have to have a little bit of control over it, but I, I like the effect that it gets where it, you kind of get a lost and found feel to the, 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 the detail level and the definition. It kind of comes and goes, and I, I like that. So I'm taking a mixture that has a little bit more alizarin crimson. It, it's a little deeper. Uh, richer tone than just the orange and that paper is wet right now so as I I take that brush which is it's not quite saturated but it's loaded pretty well with paint and put it to the saturated paper it starts to immediately starts to lose its edges and uh, soften up a little bit and you can see that it, it it's helpful when when you have an awareness of the contour of the object and, and as it relates to the direction of your brush strokes. That way it'll, it'll do a better job of defining the contours and the form of your the object that you're painting. Here as I start to paint this pumpkin, once again I'm, I'm aware of the direction of my brush strokes as they relate to the contour of this shape. But I'm also uh, going to be covering a larger area of this with this more of a red orange and less of the, the yellow tone or the gold tone. And uh, you can see most of these pumpkins are more of a, uh, a, a yellow, leaning more towards yellow, uh, almost equally. So uh, it, it's going to be helpful composition wise to come in and change uh, a few of these so they don't all look the same. So right now, this is more of a middle value red orange that I'm applying to this particular pumpkin. So similar uh, treatment to this particular pumpkin. Just as with the other one, uh, it's uh, a larger percentage of it now is more of a red orange and less of the 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 yellow, the light orange uh, tone. I'm gonna soften that and let that run down a little bit. And I'm adding a little bit more to this particular pumpkin. Again, I have my middle value, more of a red uh, orange, using just a, a, a general purpose sable round brush for this. And I'm going to soften this up with a spray bottle. And 
So I'm picking up the features of this pumpkin, uh, of these grooves, and this particular pumpkin has a shadow that's being cast by a stem on it. So it's a, a, a kind of a linear shadow uh, that curves over this pumpkin. But before I paint that shadow, I'm going to uh, do some uh, work to further define the, the form of this pumpkin before I put that shadow on. I'm going to put a fairly uh, flat wash over top of this uh, area back here where it has a, is cast in shadow with just a little bit of light peeking through. And I'm going to bring that uh, flat wash over the top of this pumpkin. There's a that area is in shadow and I've got my larger wash brushes I do this you can see it's a pretty flat wash and I'm going to soften that edge there I want that to diffuse a little bit so that now that pumpkin to the left uh, is cast a little bit more in shadow and I'm going to bring uh, some of that wash into different areas of the composition again starting to give a little bit more depth a little bit more dimension to my painting by by bringing in some of these darker middle value tones as I apply this wash it's going to uh, go over a large part of this pumpkin including that that shadow that's being cast here by this stem so that's what I'm going to paint here so I have this large wash brush, it's a round wash brush, and just applying a, a fairly flat uh, tone over the, the this particular pumpkin. And you know, the shadow is not going to be a, a straight line because there's a, a, those ridges in the way that the pumpkin's constructed, so it's going to follow that a little bit. So those edges are going to kind of roll with the contour of that pumpkin. But that shadow comes around to the other side here and connects. I'm bringing that wash up. So that starts to make it feel like that pumpkin's a little farther back now than what's going on here in the foreground. And I'll soften that top right area a little bit. You'll see that I'm putting a similar glaze over some of these other areas so I'm still using the the, the round wash brush and uh, again these are, are uh, not tiny little marks I'm making I've got a, a fully loaded wash brush it's saturated it's loaded with a, a middle value kind of a red orange and I'm, and I'm applying it in a, a more of a uh, like a wash rather than trying to paint detail and edges at this point although there are some edges that I'm uh, defining with some of these brush strokes especially some of these these shadows that have more of an edge and follow the, the contours of some of these uh, pumpkin shapes I'm going to deepen this, uh, the right side of this pumpkin, and then get some of the ridges there. Now I'm going back to my dark value green mixture here, and um, I'm taking this quill brush that has a, again, it has a point but holds quite a bit of paint. So I've got this dark valued mixture of sap green with a little bit of royal blue and some alizarin crimson in it. And it makes a very dark value um, green and it, and it feels like a natural green. It doesn't feel like a raw kind of Crayola crayon type green. And just uh, painting a little bit more detail into these uh, stems. You know, they're, they're pretty much a, a middle, dark middle value right now with some texture in it. 
but I want to do do a better job of defining some of the grooves and some of the shadowed sides of these stem shapes. So now I'm going to move to some of these other stems and uh, just do some smaller shape brushwork with a dark value. As I do some of this, I'm actually helping to find uh, some of the edges of these uh, a little stronger than what they are. And I'm, I'm doing it with value. So uh, I'm going pretty dark here. This isn't a change of color that I'm doing this with. This is value. You'll see as I put this um, darker value down here, the contrast that I achieved, even though it was a fairly dark middle value, it still wasn't uh, all the way up on the value scale. I'm going to do the same here on the back edge of this. Gonna pull that dark value all the way up. Gonna use dark value here to uh, help differentiate between the, the two stems of, of the two different pumpkins that they pretty much come together there. And I want to make them feel like uh, they're not one piece. Even though they, they form a, sh a shape there, there's a separation and there's a difference in depth. So I'm using the darker value to push that back and keeping the other one more towards the front. Next, I'm going to take my pickup eraser and I'm going to lift off the, the splattered masking fluid that I put down earlier. It doesn't take much, just need to rub that off. And then I'll come back in and some of these I'll paint over top of and there are in areas where I don't really want to see the texture like in some of the shadowed areas and other areas I'll glaze over lightly with some with a little bit of a light orange and some with a light green tone and some I'll just leave the white uh, to, re to uh, show the reflected light. Now I'm going to uh, take a middle value here. This is a mixture of, of the orange with some lizard crimson. And I'm going to give a little bit more edge to this uh, shadow back here. And then I'm going to let that uh, soften and gradate down. I'm going to bring that value around the, the pumpkin here. And I'm going to start to make some linear marks with this just to strengthen uh, the feeling of some of these grooves that are in the pumpkin. And just soften that with some clear water. Now I'm going to take some brush marks to, to help strengthen these grooves here. I'm going to bring that more towards the front and go over top of some of these areas where I've already painted as shadow. As I bring this wash down, I want to cast a stronger shadow to, to get further separation between these two pumpkin shapes here. And I want to have a, a greater sense of depth. So I'm bringing in a wash that has a little bit more raw umber in it and some alizarin crimson. And it's going to be a bit darker. So I'll put that wash along the edge and I'll leave that hard edge to the right and then I'll soften it uh, and gradate that wash as I go more towards uh, the left, the pumpkin where the shadow is being cast on. So just carry, carrying that wash over and also a little bit more brushwork in some of these grooves. And as you look at this, you can hopefully see some of the layers that have been built up, starting with the first wash with a light yellow and orange, 
and then I've uh, gradually started to build layers on top of that. And it gets kind of tricky too sometimes when you when you're going from some of these subtle uh, shifts in color from a yellow to a, a yellow orange to an orange to a red orange um, and just playing these uh, against each other at the same time getting them to work together and, and help give that feeling of light. Now I want to uh, put a little bit of a, a darker tone on this, this shadow here that's being cast but it's not going to be over the entire area. It gets a little darker there in that area so I'll put that wash on over top or more of a glaze and I'm still trying to follow some of the the, the contour there and the bumps that are there. And then I'm going to soften that out there with some water. I'm going to move on to this pumpkin here on the right. It, it needs um, some more um, more definition in terms of its form and its contours. Right now it's it's pretty much like an orange ball. So now I'm, I, haven't, I haven't really painted into some of the, these areas here to indicate the groove. So I'm bringing in some washes uh, using a round brush. And these are some of the washes with Halloween orange and gamboge and some alizarin or some quinacridone coral. Just give me a variety of red, orange, and yellow tones. So I'm just starting to bring that up a little. Need to try and make sure these brush strokes follow what would be the contour so that they make sense um, with the shape of this uh, this object. As I move around this to the right and, and give the indication a little bit more of the, the contour with some of these grooves, I know that I want to put the uh, the right side of that pumpkin in a, in a darker shadow. It's still very close to what's going on on the left side of that pumpkin which is really uh, being hit with some of the, the light so uh, I'm going to take some of that darker value which has a little bit more alizarin in it and a little bit of raw umber not a lot but just a little and then I'm going to put this uh, this side here uh, in a little bit more in a, in a, a dark middle value type shadow And as I come around to do that, I'm still painting some of these grooves, but I'm going to want to change my brush here because uh, this is just a number four round. And uh, I like to put down kind of clean, fresh uh, wash brush strokes. So there I've switched to a larger brush. That's my jumbo round small brush. Uh, it's a nice round wash brush. You see how soft it is when it applies the paint. I'm going to insert the uh, reference photo in the top right corner and hopefully you can see where this is starting to come together now. And uh, um, if you look in that lower left hand corner you can see there's a darker shadow that's cast kind of on the middle of that pumpkin. So that's what I'm working on now. And I'm going to put that in there it's a darker middle value, more towards a reddish brown color. And uh, so I'm floating that in the middle on that shape. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to soften those edges a little bit so that um, I don't have those hard edges on either end of the brush strokes that I put there. So here you can see I just soften that up a little bit. And then that pumpkin uh, to the right of it. I'm going to put a glaze on so that I can get more separation between these two pumpkins here. So I've already done some brush work here to give the indication of the grooves in the pumpkin, but I want to go with a darker value. So I'll have about three or four layers in, in a few areas here on this particular pumpkin. So I'm, I'm going darker, but I'm still not no. Uh, at the at the end of the value scale by any means it's it's a, a very dark uh, 
middle value that I'm using there. And hopefully you can start to feel a little bit that sensation of a shadow being cast on the lower left. But I'm going to go a little darker there to help get uh, some separation between those two pumpkin shapes. So I want to uh, deepen the shadows. Uh, in some of these areas I'm going to do that with a darker wash. One of the things if you build up layers here is you you paint and then it dries and you paint and it dries it it, it always dries lighter so a lot of times it doesn't dry quite as dark as you thought thought it would. So you go back in and uh, just glaze over add another layer um, until you till you get to the the value that you're after. Going back to this uh, this area here, more towards the foreground, um, and I'm going to go even deeper with this value. I've been in this area a few times, and uh, but I still want a little bit more contrast um, in that area. I want that to, to feel like it's a little bit of a deeper. Uh, area in that pumpkin and it, it's in more in shadow there here's another area where I want to go darker uh, I'm taking my uh, dark middle value painting some of the grooves and then the, the, those carry down into a sh an area that's in, in shadow so just strengthening that value up a little bit and here I'm going back towards the, towards an orange mixture not quite as dark as what I had going on to the lower left but then I've gone back to the to the darker mixture I'm gonna bring that down and it'll help describe the form of the pumpkin and uh, let tell the story about what's happening with some of the shadows So now I'm going to go into the area I've talked about a few times in the low, lower left and uh, help define the edge a little bit more between these two pumpkins. So I've got my dark middle value wash. I'm leaving that uh, hard edge to the left. And then I'm going to soften that as I go away from that hard edge. Gradate that, that mixture down a little bit. I'm going to be using just some some clear water in my brush uh, just to help gradate that that wash and it's just going to give a glaze over the shadowed area so I'm going to bring it all the way down to this other pumpkin and just try and even that wash out a little If you look at the, the stems, you'll see that the area where I had splattered some of that masking and the areas I protected still are very white. And some of them actually have a, an orange tone to them. So I'm going to glaze over them a little bit with a light orange wash. And then a few areas I'll, I'll glaze over with a light green wash. And then some of those areas I'll leave uh, alone and, and let them... Uh, just give the indication of some reflected light shining off of them. I want to tone those down just a little bit. The contrast there is just a little too strong. It's pulling me in some ways that I don't really want to be uh, the, the focal area there. So I'm going to glaze over and like here I'm going to glaze down and you can see that light orange wash that I'm putting over that area because that's going to be picking up some of the reflected light and some of it is just part of the, the way the pumpkin grows.
Now I'm going to take a dark valued green, the same mixture that I've been using on these stems. And uh, a few areas I'm just using it watered down a little bit to glaze over, but I'll take some, uh, some of the very dark mixture. I'm going to paint over some of these uh, areas where I have the splatter from the masking fluid because in some of these shadowed areas you're not going to see that that texture because it is in shadow. So those areas I'm going to uh, take down a notch just by painting over them with a darker value. Just a few finishing touches and now I'm going to frame it up with a white mat. And there you have my painting pumpkins. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want the downloadable reference material for this, you can find it at the top of my online learning center. Just click on the link for YouTube reference material. If you haven't already, be sure to sign up to my mailing list to get updates on the latest information about my videos, online courses, workshops, coupons, and giveaways. You'll find the link in the top right corner, or you can find it in the description of this video. If you have questions about my materials, you can go to the studio page of my website, rserwitzart.com. And if you have specific questions, you can email me at contactrserwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.